Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Nearman Condition and today I'm going to show you my haul for May of 2018. So stay tuned! Alright, let's kick this haul off with a couple books I got during free comic book day. They were 50% off and I got the She-Hulk Volume 1 by Tamaki. And I really enjoyed this one summer so much. I haven't read any of the Charles Soule run, so I wanted to check this out. Um... I read it. It was uh, pretty good. A lot less She-Hulk than I was expecting in a She-Hulk book and more Jennifer Walters, but it was enjoyable for what it was. Um, and then The Mighty Captain Marvel number one. Now this, I believe, is Margaret Stowe's first work in comic books. Uh, I didn't dig this book. Uh, I don't have very many Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel stories. The Carol Danvers stuff that I did have was the Brian Reed run, and I was not a big fan of that. Wasn't a big fan of this one, so maybe I'll try the Deconic run next. But I did like the artwork, even though I think there's two different artists, and I can't tell which one is which. Next up is Wolverine by Daniel Way. This is the final volume of Wolverine Origins. And this collects Wolverine Origins 33 to 50, and then the crossover with... Dark Wolverine 85 and 86. Uh, swear the only reason I get these is because of the artwork. Volume 1 because of Steve Dillon. Volume 1 and 2. And then this and Volume 3 because of Doug Braithwaite, I believe. Maybe that's not even how you pronounce his name. Um, the reason I like his stuff is because... Oh, this is Scott Eaton. It's a different artist. It's because he was the one that did the Justice Bug with Alex Ross. So it's got that painted look to it. As far as the story, it is really lame. I was not a big fan of the story. I read it once. There's Simone Bianchi's design for Romulus, who is this character that Jeff Loeb did not introduce, but introduced in his run of Wolverine. And it's... <laughs> the character design is just silly. It looks like the Wolverine from the End book by Paul Jenkins. Um, only reason to get this book is if you're a Wolvie completist or you're a fan of really bad writing or you're a fan of the artwork because the artwork is really nice to look at uh even though the story is really lame and even the story i believe the writers on uh, marjorie lou uh isn't that good either the crossover with dark wolverine and scar shows up son of hulk but you know the art is nice to look at something that dc is finally putting together and i'm finally glad we're getting is the green lantern kyle rayner volumes this takes place after the volume one which covers the how jordan going crazy and becoming the parallax and killing a bunch of green lanterns making kyle rayner the only green lantern on earth this book has a lot of crossovers it has like the guy gardener crossover which is also the return of major force the guy that coined the term women in refrigerators and he put another woman in a refrigerator in this issue um, it's got the crossover with the Dark Stars, this begins his relationship with Donna Troy, and it, that crosses over with Teen Titans and then Damage. But this was a fun read, I read this um, just a couple days ago when I got it, and I'm a huge fan of Kyle Rayner. He to me is my Green Lantern, but I know like uh, in our Old Reader, New Reader segment, I did state that I kind of relate more to Hal now, but Kyle was my boy growing up, he was my kind of first taste of Green Lantern mythos when I started reading his book right after the Emerald Twilight series. Yeah, this is the crossover with Damage and Dark Stars and the new Teen Titans. So I hope they keep putting these out because I love buying these. I love buying these 90s DC books like this and Flash and Nightwing and speaking of 90s DC books, Probably one of the biggest disappointments, and not because of the content. I'm actually a fan of Zero Hour, Crisis in Time. What I'm disappointed in is the size of this book and the freaking paper quality of the book. I'm not sure why I even bothered upgrading. It's a $25 book, but as you can see, here we'll compare it to one of these DC Rebirth oversized books. It is the size of a standard hardcover, sadly. That's just lame, DC. I, re I really do think DC hates this event. Feels like it gets no love. Because before this, it only had one printing of a trade paperback. Now this collects the showcase and it has a new intro by Dan Jurgens. 
And like I said, the showcase, I think seven and eight. It collects the five issue miniseries. I'm not sure why they couldn't make this into an omnibus as everything else in the DC crossover universe has been made into an omni just about. But uh, I really enjoy the story. This kind of set the new rules for time traveling in the DC universe. Kind of did away with a lot of the old characters from the Golden Age Justice Society of America. And it introduced a couple of new characters to the DC universe. And here we go. And then this is the extra stuff that you get. There's the original trade paperback cover. Um, there's the stand and my boy Jack Knight introduced in the series. And more pinups and original artwork here in the back. I don't know, I just really like this crossover. I really thought DC would give it a proper OHC treatment or an omnibus treatment. But I guess they'll see how, how it sells this time around. Next up in the hardcovers is Global Frequency by Warren Ellis and a ton of different artists. I absolutely love this book. I think this is probably up there in my top five favorite Warren Ellis books. It's just about everything he writes is awesome. Um, this was published by DC and it's just the complete 12 issue maxi series where Global Frequency calls out to normal citizens on earth for help to take down a crime syndicate or terrorists that are trying to blow up the earth or trying to release a poisonous gas that would destroy all of England. That's one of those backstories. Lots of talent in here, like Jason Pearson, Steve Dillon, or Steve Dillon, uh, Libby Hermo, just a bunch of artists that I really like. This is probably my favorite story here. The girl, this is the one in England with the girl that does parkour. So yes, normal citizens get a call from Global Frequency to go out above the call of duty and take down these horrible, heinous crimes that are about to happen. During free comic book day, I decided to go to Half Price Books because there was a coupon for 50% off and I ended up getting this for $10. This is Punk Rock Jesus. This is by Sean Murphy, one of my favorite artists that I've grown to love over time. And my gosh, I had no idea that this was in black and white. And just flipping through this earlier today, I was completely reminded why I love Sean Murphy. His attention to detail and his sketchy art style just calls out to me. I absolutely love it. So I can't wait to read this. I've never read this. Um, no idea what this is about. So sometimes going into a story, it's better that way. But I've enjoyed his Batman White Knight. And I've always enjoyed his artwork ever since Joe Barbarian. And here's some stuff in the back. Let's see what the inside of the cover looks like. Oh, it's just the same thing. Yeah, I had no idea that this was in black and white. Alright, let's look through some of the DC Rebirth books. We had four this month. Uh, these are all volumes twos. Here is Suicide Squad. This this can this does contain the issues with Suicide. There's the inside without the dust jacket. This does contain the issues that cross over with Justice League during that Justice League versus Suicide Squad book. Uh, let's flip through here, and it's got artwork by. This is really cool. This is the one shot written by Ostrander, the original guy that had written Suicide Squad for years. Now, I did have a lot of free time recently because of uh, my job, or lack thereof. <laughs> I've been sitting around reading comic books while I wait on uh, phone calls back. But anyway, I read all the DC Rebirths because this one read really quick. Uh, so I've kind of stacked these up from my, my least favorite to favorite. Um, so this does contain the two issues that crossed over with Justice League in that Justice League versus Suicide Squad book. Now what sucks is it does not contain the Justice League versus Suicide Squad issues one through six. Um, that was already available in hard in a hardcover format, not oversized hardcover. Which so it doesn't line up perfectly with these if you're OCD, just in case. It's a smaller scale like the zero hour here. Artwork by John Romita Jr. and Tony Daniels. 
and Eddie Barrows. And I really enjoy Eddie Barrows art in this. Really good, but there's John Romita Jr. His art's okay in this run. Um, big fan of Tony Daniels, though. So, main reason why I picked up this book. Odd. Oh, yeah, we get the Eradicator and Cyborg Superman show up in this, too. A couple of deaths of characters, a couple of resurrections, and just a pretty okay story at most. Next up, Nightwing. Now, I like this a lot more than I did Suicide Squad. This is written by Tim Seeley. This is what the inside looks like. Um, kind of surprised that Damien played such a prominent role in this book. Um, it's got a character named Deathwing, and it's got the return of Dr. Hurt. There's the aforementioned Deathwing. Really dig the artwork, too. I'm not familiar with the artist. Got the team up with Wally West, Flash. And the return of Blockbuster, I believe. And just a few more pages. Yeah, I dug this story. It's really good. Uh, Tim Seeley keeps knocking it out of the park. I believe the Volume 3 has already been solicited, so I will be picking that up as well. And let's look at the next one. And the Bat Family is Detective Comics. And I really do mean Bat Family because this features just about everybody that is left. Um, love that inside cover. So yes, this features Batwoman, Cassandra Kane, which is no longer Batgirl, but now she is known as Orphan. Spoiler... They even threw Clayface in here, and it's grown on me. I love these characters. I love the way they interact with each other. We get the return of Ra's al Ghul in this. We get the return of Lady Shiva. Um, Orphan talks about her origin. We also get Azrael coming back, and... <sighs> yeah, let me show you. There's spoiler. I thought the story kind of started slowing down about midway point, but it picked back up with this Azrael story, especially with this awesome artwork here and this right here yeah it's for your 90s kids that grew up with Nightfall and that awesome bat ass costume that Joe Quesada design but anyway that makes a resurfacing in these issues um, but yeah picked up and I think what was wrong is that it was missing uh, Tim Drake but I know he'll be back in volume 3 which volume 3 has already been solicited so not sure how many more volumes they're going to do, though. Maybe Volume 4 will be the last Rebirth in a hardcovers. I hate to see that. Because I don't think they use Rebirth anymore. No. It's a multiverse Superman. That is Ed Benes' artwork right there. Man, that guy hasn't been doing much of anything lately. Uh, so let's look in here. Yes, I don't know how much longer the DC is going to do these Rebirth titles because they are no longer calling their books Rebirth anymore, and a lot of them have been canceled. Um, so that blue bar that goes across in the bottom are no longer there. So maybe we'll get a volume four to wrap them up. I know we've got a green arrow resolicited, oversized hardcover. Uh, pretty excited about that because that was once before canceled and... Now it's been resolicited. So I hope we end up getting an Aquaman and Hal Jordan and the Green Lanterns and Green Lanterns in oversized format, but probably not going to happen. <sighs> this is, yeah, this is my favorite out of the bunch. I read all these today, yeah, and I absolutely love Superman. This collects about 13 issues. Actually, each one of these collects about 13 to 14 issues, and they're all $35. It's got artwork by Doug Mankey and Patrick Gleason, two of my favorite artists. This one here features the crossover with Action Comics, uh, Superman Returns. It's got Damien and Superboy team up. Oh, yeah, this stuff is awesome. And this is actually what kind of spins off the Super Sons storyline, too. So that's getting an omnibus later on. And we're getting 12 more issues of that, too. Uh, one of my favorite characters makes a comeback here. I've always been a big fan of Manchester Black. And let's see, here's some more artwork. Got another team up with Frankenstein. Yeah, this is absolutely a fanboy's story written by somebody that's a huge fan of Superman. That knows the history of Superman. Here, let's look at the extras here in the back. I am going to miss this team. Man of Steel just came out this week. I have not read it yet by Bendis. Um, but I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm not the biggest Bendis fan, as 
you probably know because of this. God bless. Jorge Jimenez, that guy is so amazing. I think he went on to do Super Sun, so I cannot wait for that omnibus to come out. He has a very Oliver Copiel art style, kind of Stuart Eminent look to his work. Um, but anyway, yes, I'm not the biggest Bendis fan, but I'll give it a shot and see what it's like. Now, I've done a video on Wolverine Goes to Hell Omnibus that you can check out. That was a couple weeks ago, and then I did a video just the other day on Weapon X The Return. And you can check that video out to see what's all in here. But let's look at this really quick. This, when I speak of fanboys, when I was talking about Superman, this really is a fanboy's guidebook to X-Men. Um, I've been asked if you readers can enjoy this. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can, but I don't think you'll enjoy it. I love the look of this paper, too. It's like this old newspaper yellowed quality to it. Um, I love how huge it is. I mean, look, this is an omnibus right here. And this is the size of this book. It's bigger than an absolute, almost, as far as, like, the width. Um, now... So what this does is it puts the X-Men stories in chronological order, beginning with a young Professor X um, and a young Cyclops. Stories that were told in classic X-Men, stories that were told in X-Factor, just about anywhere that they either retconned or have talked about past stories later on. Ed Piskor does it in chronological order, and it is quite amazing. I think this is perfect this makes me jealous this is something that i would have loved to have done when i was 15 years old and for somebody to go through all the trouble of looking up every inch of detail in the history of x-men and put it all in just this is believe it or not just two um issues put together i believe it's solicited to be a total of six issues so it'll be two more of these and i love this fall like hardcover feel to the book too it just feels like cardboard um but yeah this is great also he recolors i believe the yeah x-men number one i thought that was really cool that they added that on here what i didn't like is that they didn't include the glossary that tells you where each of these stories actually took place i thought that was a really cool thing about the comics like they told you at the end like they gave you an index to tell you where and when these stories took place, like if they really happened, like what issue of Marvel Comics presents, what little panel of what throwaway X Factor annual, things like that. I thought that was great about that. But, you know, um, like I said, as far as new readers, I, yeah, you can totally still enjoy this, but old readers that have been enjoying X Men and have read X Men for years, you will totally fall in love with this book. This book is a must for your library. Now that's everything I picked up in May. I would love to know what you guys have picked up. Just leave the comments down below or what you're excited to get in the upcoming month of June. And as I mentioned before, those two Wolverine books I talked about in previous episodes. So that's why I kind of just went over them really quick here. If this is your first time watching this show, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you really enjoyed what you saw, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We have a new segment that comes out every Tuesday that we call Old Reader, New Readers, where I go back and reread something from my 35 years of reading comics and two of my friends that have only been reading comics for about a year read it for the first time and that is a live stream that comes out every other tuesday at 8 p.m eastern standard time we would love for you to join us and we have a show that comes out every thursday every week except for the last couple of weeks because we've all been busy with personal things but we're coming back next week so keep an eye out on our channel for that again this was omar and thank you very much for watching